Animal visual systems can only be modified by two types of photonic or light interacting structures. Reflective mirrors, which are what make some animal eyes appear to glow in the dark, or colorful filters like oil droplets expressed in many bird retinas. Reflectors are typically located behind the retina, whether it be a camera type eye of a cat or a spider, or a compound eye of an insect or a crustacean, which is made up of hundreds or thousands of individual units. If we look at just one unit of a crustacean compound eye, we see that light enters through the lens and passes through the light sensitive photoreceptor, or rhabdome. When it hits the reflector at the back of the eye, a second dose of photons are reflected back onto the rhabdome, increasing the sensitivity of the eye and improving vision in the dark. Colorful filters work differently. These brightly colored structures are found above or around the photoreceptor. Since they only allow specific colors or wavelengths of light to pass through them, when light enters the eye, only these transmitted wavelengths can reach the photoreceptor, ultimately improving or tuning color vision. Adult mantis shrimp use a unique two-filter system in their eyes. The first colorful filter sits on top of the rhabdome, while the second one bisects the rhabdome into two layers, or tiers, so that each tier may be tuned to different wavelengths by serial filtering. This is a feature of the complex color vision system known in adult mantis shrimp. Here we present our paper on long wavelength reflecting filters found in the larval retinas of one mantis shrimp family. This paper defines a third category of photonic structures that may be used to modify animal vision. In compound eye units that contain these reflecting filters, light entering the eye is simultaneously reflected and filtered onto a tiered rhabdome by a specialized photonic structure called the Interrhabdomal Structural Reflector, or ISR. This is the first natural example of something humans have already invented, the fiber brag grating, which is used in sensors for a variety of industries. Though quite different in structure, Fiber Bragg gratings and ISRs have a similar performance where certain wavelengths are reflected back towards the light source while the remaining wavelengths pass through. The ISR was discovered in the larvae, or babies, of some mantis shrimp species. The larvae look very different from the adults because they are adapted for living a life in the open ocean as plankton. Here are three different species of mantis shrimp larvae in the lab, only the smallest of which possesses an ISR. Intrarhabdomal structural reflectors produce yellow reflectances from on-axis light coming down the eye unit. Side illumination of an eye only interacts with blue camouflage reflectors on the surface of the retina, independent of the ISR. We measured ISR reflectance in live animals through a microscope. Side and on-axis illumination create yellow and blue reflectances in the eyes of live mantis shrimp larvae. Only on-axis light can create the yellow reflectance. When the on-axis light is turned off, only blue light is reflected from the side illumination, no yellow. Our spectral analysis revealed that the ISR reflects a band of wavelengths in the yellow region of the spectrum, while the camouflage reflector is a much broader curve that peaks in the blue. Unlike regular filters, the ISR does not appear to contain any colorful pigments, which is evidenced by the absence of coloration when we separate the units of the larval eye under a light microscope. Transmission electron microscopy, or TEM, revealed that the ISR is a four-part barrel-shaped structure full of hundreds of small round units called vesicles, each about 152 nanometers in diameter which is the perfect size for interacting with wavelengths of visible light. Though we still don't know what materials these vesicles are made of, TEM tomography revealed that the geometric arrangement of the vesicles is preserved across the membranes of the four ISR segments and in three dimensions. The ISR is only present in the lateral and ventral units of the eye, as we can see using 3D imaging with two-photon microscopy. The ISRs appear as dark gaps in the rhabdomes. The dorsal part of the eye reveals a region of untiered rhabdomes and no presence of ISRs. So what are nanoscolid larvae using this weird structure for anyway? Only two types of light contain wavelengths long enough to interact with the ISR, 
moonlight, and bioluminescence. Like many zooplankton, mantis shrimp larvae vertically migrate in the water column so that they come to the surface at night to feed and hide at darker depths during the day. It is unlikely that the ISR evolved for detecting moonlight since the brightness and position of the moon is highly variable and larvae don't actually come near the surface when the moon is full. It is more likely that the ISR evolved as a novel system for detecting bioluminescent targets in a dimly lit environment, perhaps as a way for nanosquillid larvae to prey upon bioluminescent species. Regardless of what it's used for, the ISR provides us with a new way photonic structures may be used to modify vision, as well as a potential link for understanding the origin of the complex color vision in adult mantis shrimp. <laughs>